probably eat it. Gaz's front axle, taking all the old rust off it and paint and stuff. Yeah. Nice ease. I recognise these wheels, but they look a lot like my ones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice ease. Yeah. I promise we'd normally have more than two wheel nuts per wheel. <laughs> yeah, just a couple more. At uh, least two more. These aren't even the right wheel nuts for these wheels. They're not even close. I think it's supposed to be their ball tape over here, isn't it? Yeah, we're, we're sort of, um, as we're repairing, we're not just getting rid and replacing everything, we're, we're salvaging what we can. Um, so we're really not trying to make brand new cars here, we're trying to make really good old cars. Yeah, and they're on budget. That's yeah. our key, is keeping things on budget. So, every time we take off and go in the box, just makes it easier to remember where everything comes from. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to take, we'll start by removing all the ball boots, or the, the steering arms as people call them, whatever you want to call them. We've got calipers, pumps, um, yeah, discs. These ball joints are actually new, but they've been sat so long that the rubbers are all cracked. Yeah. But they've never actually been driven. That red, that blue box, that blue box, you know, when I had out yesterday, but it's in the rapids. I really don't know what condition these are in, but they did work. I put your brake pads in them years ago. I assume they still work. So there's going to be um, two videos pretty much identical because once Gavin is done, we're going to do my show. Yeah, the only difference being mine's already lowered. Yeah, we'll have a video on actually lowering the front axle because mine's not been done yet and I do want it lowered. Okay. That doesn't mean they're smooth like that. Can you grab that and twist it so I can get this knob? Yeah. Okay, okay. Just grab the thing anyway and pull it. Give it a little twist. It's on the car and you haven't already stripped the body off. There is actually a speedo that comes through my right side. Yeah, speedo. Yeah, speedo comes through, yeah, speedo comes through this little square here. As it pops through, there's a little clip that goes on. The clip's very simple to get off. It's right, so holding the disc on. It's a tapered bearing set up, so there's an end nut that tightens up and you, you adjust it. And then once you've got it, you want to stop it coming undone, there's a locking bolt that goes through it. Just loosen the locking bolt off like that, and then the nut should come loose. Or may, may have to get some, it should be very tight. Um, it should be quite easy to turn. A left handed thread on the. Which side am I on? Uh, Passenger side. You're on the near side, yeah. The near side is left handed thread, if anyone's looking. Did not like the thread, it? <laughs> on a car that's newer than you know, 47 years old. Normally when you're taking these ball joints off, you just get a good tap on the, not on the thread or on the ball joint, but on the bit that the ball joint goes into. Are you leaving the bed? Yeah, pop out. Yeah, put the washer and the nut back on. Um, we're, we're going to take the, uh, yeah, the actual shaft off. Okay, we'll take the back plate off and we'll take the, yeah, the forward. Plate, yeah. 
Right, once you've got the disc off and the bearings removed, and everything, I've just put the bearing back on to stop from, to save from losing it. Um, next, I'm going to remove the backing plates, which is two 11 mil bolts. Uh, three 11 mil bolts, sorry. Yeah. So because I started in about 2011, I sort of the very first thing I did was replace the brake suspension and stuff, and then like, I let it sit for 10 years, as you do. What I like to do when I'm taking something off, if I know it's going to go into a storage box, I know we have the big box for um, putting parts in. Uh, just so that you ain't left with a load of small bolts and try to remember where they go and stuff like that. Just screw them back into the hub if you're not 100% sure, sure you'll remember where everything goes. Uh, we're both removing these front shocks now. Uh, there's a double locking nut here. If no one knows what a double locking nut is, it's literally one nut and another nut and they lock together. I think though that's just on these shocks. I think the original. When if, you, you... if you want to loosen it off, put one spanner to the back of the, fir the first nut on and then the second nut and you literally just we're holding one, the back one still while she's doing the front one. And the, the lower bolt, the one closest to the shock absorber, because it's pushing down on a rubber bush and when you tighten it up, it's sort of a feel thing, you don't bottom them out. So, so they, they should not be tight when you take them off. These are spring loads on the torsion bar. Hmm? Those are these spring loads on the torsion bar, right? No, no. You sure? Because that seems very spring loaded. No, it's not Phil. Uh, I don't. I, I could be wrong, Phil, but I don't think it is. Right. I've lost the hang of uh, just knowing what size things are. This one's back in, so I'm going to replace the set. That one's actually good, actually. The outer one's actually really good, but the inner one's loose. And if it's uh, something you know, specific to the car. These are, we've got new ones. We've got new ones of those. Did you? I don't know if we've got We've got three, we've already got three. Yeah, I'm going to replace those anyway, because the new ones come really anodized, so they're like brassy cord on. Yeah, like a grape like a, a, a color, probably the one we put in it. Great. Great, like a green grape. Like a green drink colour. No. Like the old gun colour over there. We're getting completely off subject. Oh, gold. Gold, yes. Yeah. <laughs> You're the only person I know that has golden grapes. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you've got the disc off, the shocks yeah. off, all of the um, ball joints are off the uh, front axle now. Because uh, Gaz, Gaz has lowered his axle and I've lowered my axle, oh, I'm going to lower my axle, sorry. We're both going to be removing the towing arm from the lower side. The low, how low we're going with the cars, you don't yeah. really have, it touches the floor, doesn't it? So With no weight on this car, this is about an inch off the ground. Yeah. Explain it to the camera whilst you're doing it, I just wasn't listening. Yeah. You actually got to listen at that part. I'm good like that. Did you just come off alright? Did it like knacker it when it came off? No, it came off. Right, keep them in and spray it. It's in the tub there. Oh, I look and replace it because they're uh, the new one's a great colour. Great <laughs> You're an awesome. I can't say that on YouTube either. Claire, that's, I haven't seen that before. Did you have just like a regular nut on the end? No, I don't know. Allen keys are cut off on the ratchet. Yeah. I must have seen it like that before because I've taken them off before, but I don't remember that. If anyone's confused at what Gaz is actually on about, he's on about <laughs> the, um, the retaining nut for the. Um, Wheel and the spindle. I'll, sh I'll show you, I'll bring it yeah. over to the camera. I did explain it, but I didn't show it, so maybe it's a good idea. Did you actually explain it? I explained that there was an Allen key going through it, locking it, like a locking bolt, through a bolt, through a nut. It's hard, it's sound. If you don't know what it is, I'll show you now. It's a lot more uh, easier to understand when you see it than when you're trying to explain it. I imagine a castle nut would have been easier. No, it's not Cheap. a castle nut, though, is it? Cheaper to produce. But, you sure? Okay, so. It's just an, it's a regular nut, but it's got um, a space for an Allen key to come through. And it pinches the bolt down so it doesn't back off. It's basically a fancy lock nut. But I thought it was just like a nylock or something or a castle nut.
Here we have a wild fill in natural environment. Right, just going on to this ball joint, and just a handy tip for anyone if they don't know. If you've never worked on cars before and you decide to take on a project like this, if it starts spinning on you, there's a handy little nut. Get a pair of grips around the top or something. Do you know what that nut is? Hey? Do you know what that nut is? You should know what that nut is. No. It's a camber adjuster. Where is it? Yeah. Oh. Grab hold of the camber adjuster. Didn't you? Grab hold of the top nut with Cam the camber adjuster. adjuster and it'll just hold it still whilst you undo it. Uh, if you want to see what the ball joints look like after 10 years of not using them. Rusty. <laughs> The rubber, like I said, these are brand new ball joints. They've never, they've not done a mile, but they've just been sat for. Or a kilometer, if you're in America. Not anywhere but the UK, really. But, but yeah, these have just been sat for ten years, and the rubber's perished, and it's basically started to decompose. No, it's literally it's not sensitive, it's enough that the hole in the middle just drills down. That comes out quite easy, isn't it? It's in the torsion rod, they're quite flexible. Yeah, there's no weight on it. And because I've got the adjuster, when you pull them apart, you turn the adjuster around and you're putting that one to maximum height and that one to lowest height. So it's easier to stick them off once you load your car. Right, so that's one of the spindles removed off the front now. I think we might have just figured out why the steering was a bit stiff. That's really... <coughs> that barely moves. Steering box is nice and free now as well. <laughs> and it's not got any play I did adjust it up as much as I could yesterday, but... There's no play in that at all, is there? It must have just been the ball joints fighting it. So right now we're just cutting the uh, fancy roll bar bushes off because we're not reusing really them, we're just going to get new ones. Uh, pretty much all the running gear on the front end is going to get replaced, it's just going to swap the jeep. So this is the lowering um, mechanism that I restricted to his. Uh, I'll be fitting the same one. It was the exact design. Looks like it might just be seized in one place. This is catchy in the middle, so I've got another ball for that. Out on the top two out, so. and the middle one's stuck in. Okay, so the, the full complete ones are not moving. He's the same type of box as well. He's the same type of box as the frame. Yeah, yeah, the same type box. We're still stuck on something, aren't we? It's only one leaf, which is the middle of the well, no, sorry, it's two leaves. I can see that. I remember taking these out and they just slid out of the back. Do you remember which one they were stuck? Pretty much that's how they come out of these ones with the these sort of fell apart, but they're all the same. No, oh, it's worse in the middle left. Yeah, right. There's two on top of that and one in the middle. Oh, I'm not massively worried about it. I just didn't want all the middle ones because they 
Yeah, the middle one did that. Yeah, the middle one did that. If you look, they filled out. Yeah. But we need to, we'll have to strip them down, clean them all, and re-grease them all. Because they all take from there. So what we're going to do is, before we strip all these and re-grease them, we're going to do the axle first, because there's no point in re-greasing these and them sitting aside and get covered in dust. We're going to grease them. I think we're going to grease them on the bench and slide them in out, and then we're going to fill the tubes with grease. Yeah. It's definitely caught on something, isn't it? Yeah, I got right to That's out and upside down, is it? Yeah. Yeah, so top down. Three that come out on the other one as well, the three individual ones. I wonder if it's, it's the three that are drilled, aren't they? I wonder if they drilled this cap. Yeah, they've burned up against them something. And they've been over tightened by a certain somebody getting excited when they lowered it. Can't possibly be. I did this and I was an expert 18 year old when I did it. Yeah. Look, I've loaded it. Mm. When I pulled them individually before they all came. So I get a punch and just knock one individual on it. That's a little bit straight on top of that one there. They came out right after that. Load it. They really are stuck. <laughs> Roll the bearings and get cleaned out and re-greased So we've taken a bit of break from the paint removal. We've done more than half of it, um, but at the minute our hands are starting to get a bit tingly from the grinders. So we're going to go ahead and skip to some of the repairs and come back to um, grinding off the paint later. Most of the beams in really good condition, but this corner, this seems to have had it the most. I don't know if it's been damaged at some point here or if it's just took the weather the most. Hmm? I've zoomed into it for you. Um, but it's had a couple of patches in the past. Um, the patches have failed as well, so we're gonna have to cut past where it's been repaired in the past and remake all this. It's not, you know, it's fixable though, it's not. Yeah, we're gonna, what we'll do is, these are like before, what we'll do is like before and after video. So we'll put the camera up on the tripod, but then you'll get a close up of what we've actually done once we've done it. Yeah, so the pipes themselves, the tubes, they're actually quite thick. I think they must be four or five mil thick, maybe. Uh, but this, these end panels, these are only about two mil. Yeah. So the sheet steel we've got should be more than enough for that. It, I think it's more the shape of that that gives us the strength yeah. than it is the, uh, the actual thickness of the steel, isn't it? 